What's up, mushroom family? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. I'm here at my lab in Denver, Colorado, and today I wanted to do a video on the easiest way to produce positive pressure in your lab. So I did a video um, not too long ago that I'll post the card if you want to check that video out on the reasons why you would need positive pressure in your lab, or I'll post the link in the description. Um, but the idea is that you're going to generate enough pressure inside your laboratory that it's going to keep bugs and other contamination from coming into your lab because all the cracks and crevices and doorways will have air flowing outward and that will prevent any contaminants from entering your lab. The easiest way, in my opinion, to do this besides um, putting some HEPA filters in your ceiling and really having thoughtful HVAC systems in place is to just put a simple fan and a HEPA filter from the outside of your lab going in. So for me, I'm going to put it on a door. Um, this is my utility door, so I've got two entrances to my lab, and this will be really easy to access for when I have to change out my filter. Um, and then I, I really enjoy these uh, four inch fans from, it's a uh, Vivo Sun and you just want to note the airflow direction. So basically, I'm going to put this on the other side of the door, attach this really handy HEPA filter to the end of the fan, and then I'm going to drill a four inch hole in the door so that the air will come through the fan, be filtered um, through the HEPA filter, which is 99.9% .9 of particles. Then it's going to come through the blades of the fan and into the room and if I run this continuously, it will create a positive pressure inside this room and prevent contaminants from getting into um, my workspace. And I'm about to be diving into a really deep uh, breeding project. So I'm trying to minimize as much contamination as possible. So a word to the wise, um, if you're going to be drilling holes in your wall or in a door, um, just consult your wife or your significant other or the owner of the property. Thankfully, I own this lab, so any damage that I do is on me, um, but that also gives me the freedom to mess around like in today's video. All right, so I'm going to start off with a uh, hole saw. So I've just got a four inch hole saw. I recommend maybe getting the the four inch and a quarter if you want a little wiggle room and then you're gonna have to put some caulking around it but it might be a little bit of a better fit I don't know how this is gonna be I might have to jiggle around my uh, saw bit a little bit to be able to fit this four inch fan but you can see it, ma it matches up pretty nicely um, so I think it's gonna be okay and then it does taper a little bit. So if I just push it in there really tightly, that should be enough to have a really good seal. And then these HEPA filters, they have like a little rubber seal on the end. And um, this uh, little ring here with the threaded screws to tighten that to the end of the fan. And then like I said, I'm gonna put it on a door so that I can easily open and swap these out maybe once a year or once every six months. Um, but yeah, I'll uh, post a link for the Amazon or you can just search this HEPA air filter. They do have a carbon filter variety if you're not too concerned, but the HEPA standard, this is going to be the best rated one. Um, they have four inch through 12 inch and then for the carbon, they've got the six inch through the 12 inch. So I decided to go four inch just because um, these fans were a little bit cheaper. And I don't have a giant lab, but if you are working in you know, a 20 foot by 20 foot lab, you might wanna consider uh, sizing up maybe to the 10 or 12 inch. But yeah, these are uh, really inexpensive filters. You can find them on Amazon. And I wanna give a shout out to some of my friends here in Denver who gave me the idea. Um, I saw it on someone's Instagram feed. So thank you for the, the idea. And I just wanted to spread the word to the rest of the community because this is a really easy way to add positive pressure to your lab. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead, set up the drill, and we'll pop our hole through this door, and hopefully that goes smoothly. <laughs> okay, so I've got my door where I'm gonna be drilling my hole. I've got my four inch hole saw and a basic drill here. So I'm just gonna go ahead, attach that on, and then it should go really smoothly. Um, another really good area where you could place these is above the door if you only have one entrance. That way it's putting fresh air in at the uh, most likely source of contamination, which is the entrance to your lab. Um, or you could also go from the ceiling or uh, just any part of the drywall. You just wanna make sure that you have easy access to the other side so that you can change the filter. Okay, I'm just gonna put it at you know a little bit above eye level so it will be blowing that fresh air in over my workspace. Um, so I hope you guys can see that. So there's the hole. And now I'm going to just wipe this off and attach my fan and filter and we'll see how the airflow looks. All right guys, so you can see it's really snug in that hole. Um, I did go around a couple times with some handy dandy duct tape to give it a tighter fit. And if you're concerned about the weight, you can add an L, brad, an L bracket right on the bottom to support that. But it's really snug and I feel confident that it's going to be fine. All right, so this has a really nice uh, rubber seal on it. So you can kind of just stick it on there and twist it. But I'm going to tighten this clamp for a little extra support. All right guys, so I've got it plugged in. It's operating. It does come with a little um, gauge to change the speed of the fan. I'm running it on high and I can definitely feel um, some positive pressure coming in. So if you wanna go above and beyond, I would add maybe a, a L bracket on the other side to support the weight of that filter. But you can see um, I guess I've got this little thing here. It's definitely pumping out a lot of air. And if you want to go a net, uh, above and beyond, you can seal the edge of that, make it really nice. Um, they make, you know, little covers for a four inch opening with a vent, maybe put it down so that you're not blowing debris all over your lab. But you can see it was as simple as that. We've got a fully functioning HEPA filter in our door for our lab to create positive pressure. I hope you enjoyed that video. Give us a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. We've got running positive pressure in our lab now. So I'm going to be moving on to our breeding project for the winter. I'm planning on doing uh, a bunch of different variants of our current strains. I'm really excited about the golden oyster. I've got a few different phenotypes that I'm going to be combining into one solution so that I have more of a genetic variety and hopefully we come up with a really nice golden oyster strain. Um, that was one of my, my weakest strains from the past summer. I'm also gonna be doing some different uh, heresium strains. We've got heresium coralloides that I wanna run um, some maitake. I'm still trying to figure out maitake. So if anyone has some tips on that, comment in the comment section below. But give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video on positive pressure. And I look forward to the next video. Until next time, much love.